In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint Battle Sisters, including the power armor, any robes, and all the other details you'll need to paint to get them finished. Welcome to Tabletop Ready. My name's Michael, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be painting some Adeptus Sororitas Battle Sisters. Any brushes and paints I use in this tutorial will be linked in the description, as well as being shown on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content, I would love for you to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. It really helps get my content out to more people. And if you want to help support the channel and what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon, which I'll also link in the description. I really do appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to creating all the content on the channel. And it also allows me to keep making improvements to the quality of the videos I make for you. And I really massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people who have made this tutorial possible. And I want to say a massive thank you to Yannick Mortier who recently donated to the channel. Thank you very much. I've built the battle sisters and sub assemblies to make painting easier. It allows me to get to areas that would be difficult to get to if the miniatures were fully assembled. So for these battle sisters it's important that we're able to get to the inside of the robes to paint that dark red cloth. So I made sure to elevate them from the mount using paper clips so I'm able to easily get my brush to these areas. If you're not someone who likes to paint with sub-assemblies then I would leave the miniatures off the base to start with to paint these areas. And once you're done painting these areas you can then glue them to the bases. I've also undercoated these battle sisters with Chaos Black Spray as the main colour for the armour is black and overall the only bright colour is the vibrant red robes. I'm going to be covering a lot of different things in this tutorial to help you get your own Battle Sisters painted and you should have no problem following along no matter what your skill level. Throughout this tutorial I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps you'll need to get your Battle Sisters painted and to make this easier I'll be splitting the tutorial up into different chapters. In this first section of the tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint the inside of their robes and show you some of the techniques I'll be using throughout this tutorial. So I actually want to start by showing you some of the techniques and skills you're going to need throughout this tutorial to get your own Battle Sisters painted and so you have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. And we're going to start with the very basics of applying paint to your miniatures. The first area we're going to work on are the inside of their robes because it's going to get messy and we don't have to worry about ruining any other area we may have already painted. The first colour we're going to use is Galvor Back Red for our base colour and whenever we're painting we want to thin our paints first and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. As well I like to remove some of the paint from the brush on some paper towel first to give us more control how much paint is being deposited when we're painting. When applying the paint to our miniature make sure to keep your brush moving try not to go over any area you've already painted to prevent any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. Once you're done applying the paint to an area, because we thinned our paint you'll notice it hasn't covered very well. That's okay though as we can repeat the process and apply another layer. Painting in multiple thin layers like this lets us build up a nice looking solid base colour without losing any details on our miniatures. Just make sure to let each layer dry before applying another one. The very basic technique of applying paint to our miniatures is often overlooked but you'll be amazed at what a difference it can make when we take the time to learn and practice how to do this properly. With the base colour done the next thing to do is to create some darker and lighter areas to mimic how our robes would look if light were interacting with them. The next technique I want to show you is glazing which is going to help us achieve smoother blends and transitions between the colours on the robes. Let's first work on the raised folds of the robes that are going to be lighter and we're going to be using corn red for this. To turn our corn red into a glaze we're going to thin it down more than we normally would with two parts water to one part paint to make it more transparent to help make smoother transitions between the colours. We want to use this corn red glaze on the raised folds of the robes and when using a glaze we want to make sure we paint an even thin coat. Even though we're using quite a thin mixture for our glaze, try not to think of this as a wash. A glaze is mainly used to tint an existing colour or to create tonal variation in a more controlled way. You can
can build the glaze up if you want it to be stronger. Just make sure to do this slowly, letting each layer completely dry before glazing again. We can even help to smooth the transition even more with the glaze of the colour we're blending with. In this case it's going to be Galvorback Red. I realise we've just gone from a very basic beginner technique to a more advanced technique that you see a lot of high level painters using. But that doesn't mean someone new to painting can do it. In fact it's a lot of fun to do and just takes a little practice. Now we're finished with the light raised folds, let's do some more glazing but this time using an Abaddon black glaze to create shadow in the shallow folds of the robes. Again we can get a smoother transition using Galvor back red glaze as this is the colour we're transitioning from. With that done we've just learned how to glaze and this is a technique we can use to create smoother blends than if we were just to apply our colours like we did with our base colour. Hopefully after that lesson in glazing you should now have the confidence even as a beginner to follow along with the rest of this tutorial. But we're not done yet. To finish the robes we're going to have to learn how to highlight. Whenever we're highlighting it's a good idea to keep a brush separate so we know it's ready to go when we need it. As well we don't really need to thin our paint as much either because we want a strong colour and we're not using multiple thin layers this time. And again I like to remove excess paint on some paper towel as this will help prevent those thick blobby lines and lets us control how much paint is being deposited. To highlight the robes we're using pink Cora and the idea is to paint any edges and details that we want to be more noticeable. We can make this easier by angling our brush against an edge and run it along that edge to create the highlight. For any areas you can't do this, just take your time painting thin lines where you want the highlight to be. And when you're done, you should see how this has helped to bring out all those edges and details of the robes. Along with glazing, highlighting is another very powerful technique that's worth practicing and getting good at. Not only does it improve the look of our miniatures, but it also improves our hand-eye coordination and brush control, helping us to become better painters overall. So now we've finished painting the inside of our robes, we can use what we've learned in this first section of the tutorial to get our Battle Sisters painted, starting with their black power armour. For this section, let's use what we've learned so far to paint the Battle Sisters power armour and to paint their bright red robes. I know I've covered a lot in the first section of this tutorial, but you should now have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. And with that knowledge, you should be able to paint some amazing looking Battle Sisters. We're now ready to use what we've learned in the first section, and the first thing we want to do is use a bad and black to tidy things up and paint our base colour. And even though we use Chaos Black as our undercoat, for best results, painting the base colour first is always a good idea, as we want to be sure it's the actual colour we want. This is because the colours from the sprays don't really match the colour from the pots. And if we make any mistakes and have to neaten up using the paint from the pot, it won't be so noticeable if we had done this over the undercoated colour. With those steps done, we can now think about highlighting the power armour, but this time instead of a single highlight, I'm going to show you the different stages of highlighting that work together to create an even more impressive looking miniature. The first highlight we're going to do on the armour is called a chunky highlight, and we're using Dark Reaper for this. This highlight wants to be quite a thick line, so it's still visible once we've painted our thinner edge highlights. You want to take your time going around the armour, painting this highlight along any edges, and to pick out raised details. This will help to bring out the shape of the armour, and soften those later stages of highlighting, so they look more natural. Always remember, when you're highlighting, you are allowed to neaten up your lines if you're not happy with them. The other thing we can do with our newly learnt glazing technique is to create some volumetric highlights as well on the more curved surfaces where a line highlight may be too sharp. Using a dark reaper glaze, the same colour we just used for our chunky highlight, pick out the more curved surfaces, for example on the legs, shoulder guards and power packs. Paint a shape that best suits the area and when you glaze in, notice that pigment is mainly deposited where the brush leaves the surface. 
For our second stage of highlights, we're going to be doing an edge highlight using Thunderhawk Blue. And this is to emphasise all the edges and sharp details. And we already know how to paint this kind of highlight as we did this for the inside of the robes. We also want to continue building up our volumetric highlights with the Thunderhawk Blue Glaze, the same as we just did with Dark Reaper. Just make sure to continue on from the Dark Reaper rather than just covering it up. After you're done with Thunderhawk Blue, let's use Vermizoon Grey, but this time only on the more prominent edges you really want to stand out. A Vermizoon Grey Glaze can also be used to finish the volumetric highlights. The final highlight I want to show you is a spot highlight to finish the armour with. Using Ulthman Grey, paint little dots on all the corners of the armour where we'd expect light to focus. There's a lot of work going into painting these Battle Sisters, so don't expect to be able to sit down and get them finished in just one sitting. A unit of 10 of these will usually take anywhere up to two weeks to get them fully finished, but the end results will be worth it, and you should have some miniatures that you can be really proud of. So now we're done painting the black armour of our Battle Sisters, let's finish off this section of the tutorial by painting the vibrant red robes. For our base colour, I'm using Mephiston Red, making sure to get a solid colour which we can work from. And once you have that solid base colour, we're going to use a corn red glaze to darken the shallow folds and then an evil sun scarlet glaze to start to lighten the raised areas of the robe. Let's use a Mephiston red glaze to smooth out those transitions. And after that continue to build up the lighter areas using a Wild Rider red glaze. And when you're happy with how all that looks, we can use Tau Light Okra to highlight. It's really up to you how many colours, highlights and stages you want to do to paint your own miniatures. I just want to show you what's possible. And it's really the techniques and skills that I'm trying to teach you because if you know how to do those then you can paint anything. With the vibrant red robes painted, the next details and areas I want to focus on are all the metallic details and weapons. There's a few different metal details across our battle sisters that need painting, so that's what we're going to do in this section of the tutorial, including any weapons. Let's start with all the silver details using lead voucher for our base colour. Let's paint any weapon casings next using Rune Lord Brass, so they stand out from the silver details making them more interesting. To give these areas some definition, let's shade them using Norn Oil. You want to use enough to cover these details comfortably to avoid any pulling up in areas you don't want it to. And once the shade is completely dry, you'll see that it's helped to bring out all those details. Finish the weapons with an edge highlight using Stormhost Silver. For any trinkets and details we want to be gold, start with Retributor Armour. Once the base colour is painted, use Liberated Gold to paint the raised areas and details. Apply some Reichland Flesh Shade next to give us that definition. Finish with an edge highlight on any gold details using Canoptech Alloy. The last thing we can do in this section is use some Stormhouse Silver to paint any rivets and buttons across the Battle Sisters to add interest and to make them more visible. Now we have any weapons and all the metallic details done, let's start getting all the other details and materials around the armour painted. There's still plenty to do, so for this section, let's see how we can get the white armour details and leathers painted. With everything I've shown you throughout this tutorial, you should now have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. So I'm not going to be going into so much detail as I have been whilst painting the armour and robes. To finish the armour, we still need to paint any white details, so let's start with some Corax white. To give these areas definition, we can use some Apothecary White Contrast. To brighten the white back up again, use some Orthon Grey, making sure to leave that Apothecary shade still visible. 
Highlight these details with white scar. So there are two types of leather on our battle sisters. There's the darker leather for the corsets and gloves, but there's also a lighter leather for the straps and pouches. For the dark leather, we're going to use Corvus Black for our base colour. When that's done, we want to use Dryad Bark for a chunky highlight and to bring out the more raised areas. Finish any dark leather with some Storm Vermin Fur highlights. Any straps and pouches that are painted in a lighter brown leather, start with some Doom Ball Brown for our base colour. After that, Scrag Brown is used for the chunky highlight and then Tau Light Okra for the edge highlight. Let's move on to the final section of this tutorial now where I want to show you how to paint the heads of our battle sisters. The last part of this tutorial is going to be used to show you how to paint the heads of our battle sisters. The first thing we want to do, because we're aiming for a light skin tone and the hair is white, let's start by base coating the head Corax white to make getting those lighter colours easier. Next, use some Kizler Flesh for our skin, and remember we want to be using multiple thin layers so we don't lose any of those details. We're now going to be using our glaze technique again as we want to create soft tones as we're dealing with more feminine features. We're going to work downwards first, creating definition in areas you'd expect shadow. First using a glaze of Cadian Flesh Tone, and after that using a Bugman's Glow Glaze. When I'm happy with how that looks, I take some time to neaten things up with Kizler Flesh before working on highlights. To highlight the skin, we use in an equal mix of Kizler Flesh and Screaming Skull. Using this to glaze the more raised features of the face, like the nose and chin for example. Again, build this up slowly until you're happy with how it looks. Even though I'm only showing you a lighter skin tone in this tutorial, Using the same steps and techniques, you can actually paint all kinds of skin tones. And the only thing that is really going to change are the colours that are used. If you're feeling adventurous and want to have a go at painting some eyes, first use some thinned down Doom Ball Brown. You're going to need a good point on your brush for this. Next, use some white scar and you want to try and leave the Doom Ball Brown still visible around the edge. Finish the eyes painting a bad and black in the centre. You want to make sure it meets both the top and bottom of the eye. To paint the white hair, let's neaten things up with Corex White first of all. Now we want to apply some Apothecary White, but just in the recesses this time. Layer up and neaten up with Open Grey, before we finish the hair with some White Scar Highlights. Let's finish this tutorial painting the little screens on their packs, starting with Corn Red as a base. After that use Mephiston Red, leaving some Corn Red still visible in the top right corner. Edge highlight the little screen using Troll Slayer Orange. And then finish the screen first of all painting three dots of Fire Dragon Bright, and then a final spot highlight of white scar on the top right corner. I didn't really think this tutorial would be quite as advanced as it has been, but it was a great opportunity for me to show you some of the more advanced techniques and how we can use them. I've certainly learned a lot myself and these are a great project for anyone looking to improve their own miniature painting. Now let's see how they turned out. Our Adeptus Aratus Battle Sisters are now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to get your own painted. Make sure to check out the other tutorials and shorts on the channel. All my tutorials have something in them to learn no matter what you're looking to paint. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you enjoy watching them. If you do, please let me know in the comments and by liking the video. It really does help them get out to more people. You can also support what I do here at Tabletop Ready by becoming a member or joining the Patreon where you'll be kept up to date on what I'm working on 
and you'll even see what I'm up to behind the scenes. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.